So with lab E, this one looks at doing serial dilutions to be able to count the number of organisms you have. So the way this is normally done is you either would use sterile saline and sterile transfer pipettes, or you can use auger that's been melted down to do the dilutions. In here, we're going to use these models that I've created. But what you can do with these pipettes, this is one type of pipette here. You put the sterile tip on it. These are obviously not sterile at this point. What they would normally do is come in a container and you would stab the pipette into the tip on there so that your hands never have to come into contact with it. The way you adjust the volume on these is at the top, and this is in microliters. And then when you press down, it's going to collect that much fluid. So right now I have this one set for 1,000 microliters, or one milliliter. So when I would push it into the water in there, you push it down, it sucks it up, what would be transferred into the next tube would be 1,000 microliters in there. The way that these are supposed to come off is this is a handle that would push off on here. These tips don't fit real well on here, and so they're not popping off like they normally would. There are other types of pipettes out there. Some of them will have dials on the side. Some will be on the top here that adjust the volume. And then other ones are for a fixed volume in there. So if you were going to be using one volume to transfer lots of things, the easiest thing is just have one that's a fixed volume. And it's just plunger, pretty easy to use those. So you can play with them to get an idea of what they're like. That's what the test tubes and the water are set up for here. <coughs> Otherwise, in the rest of this lab, what we're going to be doing is looking at how we do these dilutions in there. So we have our original sample that we start out with. And what we want to know is how many organisms are in here. And so when you look at this, they're too dense in here to count them by themselves. That's why we're going to do a dilution of them. You can't, if we were to take one milliliter of this and plate it out on a plate, it would be solid growth. You couldn't count individual colonies. And so each of these tubes that you would have, if you want to set this up to be easy, would have nine milliliters of sterile saline in there. Now, if you're the one setting this up, it's a lot easier to do 10 and 100 fold dilutions in there when you do your calculations. You can do it with other numbers, but this is the quickest, easiest way to do it. So usually you would do six of them. So what we're going to do is take one milliliter of this sample and put it in here. When you add one milliliter, now you have a total of 10 milliliters. So you have diluted it to one tenth or a tenfold dilution. The easiest way to write this out is in scientific notation. So one tenth would be 10 to the negative one on there. With the scientific dilution, remember when you have the negative number up here, it's because you've moved the decimal place to the left. Right. You've moved it in there to make it a smaller number in there. And so positive shows the decimal point is moved to the right, negative is to the left. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we have one tenth dilution here. Still not diluted enough. So we would mix this up. And when you mix it, usually you want to swirl it with your hand like that. You wouldn't want to use a centrifuge because what that does is it clusters them all together down at the bottom. If you centrifuge blood, you'll notice that you get three kind of layers like that in there because it moves all of the densest stuff to the bottom. What we're trying to do is get a random sample of what's in here. So we want things to be as evenly dispersed in there as we can and just to swirl it around and mix it. There's also little devices that you can get that you put your test tube on there and it does this little wiggle thing 
on there with your test tube if you're too lazy to swirl it. So after that, you would move another one milliliter. And so now, again, you've added one in here. This one is a tenfold dilution of this. So now it's a hundredfold. Move it again. The dilution becomes to the negative third. One milliliter again. And so on till you get down to the end. This is usually still not diluted enough. And to put one milliliter on your typical size petri plate <coughs> is going to be too much fluid in there. So now what we're going to do is take one micro or one one hundredth of this and dilute it even more. So we would have our plates here. And we're only going to use the three most diluted ones. So where we had one milliliter, now we will use one microliter. So on your sheet, where it's 0.1 milliliter, I'm sorry, that's what I have set up. One microliter was going to be pretty small. And so these problems on your sheet are showing this being done here. And actually, doing this plate here. There we go. So your three most diluted tubes go into your three most diluted plates. So this is diluted a hundredfold in here. And remember, a hundredfold is adding 10 to the negative 2 on there. So what we do is 10 to the negative 4 dilution diluted a hundredfold becomes a 10 to the negative 6. This one will become 10 to the negative 7. This will become 10 to the negative 8. So that's how we figure out how diluted these are. When you go to count these, we are making the assumption that each colony on here came from one individual cell. So we'll refer to them as colony forming units. And when you look at your plates, <coughs> what you should find is one of them may have just a few colonies. And then one of them is going to have a lot of colonies. This one has 568, this one 28, that one has 4. So the only plate that you really need to count is the one that you know that is going to be between 30 and 300. On here, if there's 568, the realistic ability to count that is not going to work. 28 is countable. This could be contamination. It's not enough to be an accurate sample in there. So this is going to be the one that we will what you would do is then you're going to multiply it by your dilution factor here. Your dilution factor is 10 to the negative 7. You take the inverse of it. 30 seconds. When you correct for scientific notation, scientific notation has one number before the decimal point. We're moving this over one. 20. And so let's stop it and we'll do a new one. 